So good day all and welcome to the South African Lawn. Yo people, so welcome to a lekker summer's day here in the western parts of Johannesburg in the southern parts of Africa. So as you've just seen that I've just used my Kukuyu Guru Lawn Leveler, what, what? Kukuyu Guru Lawn Leveler, that's better, um, to take the dew off my lawn um, to get it ready for a spraying application right there. But never mind the spraying applications, we just want to talk like a lawn today. What the situation is, what we can apply to our lawns, why is our lawns looking so lacquer? All those good things, okay? So yeah, just have a look at this lawn. Let me show you my lawn for a second here. I am lacquer proud of this oaky. Right here. So whoever said that you cannot stripe Kukuyu? Who said that? Put your hand up. Excuse me. Excuse for moi. Okay, you can't see it so lacquer, but I promise you with a with a good camera or with your eye, you can see that there's stripes here. But I must be honest, I've been mowing probably about five or six mowings now in dead set the same direction right here. Probably at least two to three weeks. So I'm burning it in. I must say the first attempt at changing your stripes here and don't pop up as lacquer. Um, but when you keep mowing in the same direction and you flip and train your grass to lay in a certain direction, it shows, it shows. Can you see that? Okay, Mensa, so yeah. So here we've got a couple of products that I'm going to all add to my lawns uh, today. And um, the one thing that you won't see there is insecticide. And I'm so sorry about that. I would have really, uh, well, I don't want to say I would have really liked that there were some insects present in my lawn, but I really don't want to apply insecticide to a lawn that doesn't need it. And I've been so fortunate because I see like tons and tons of questions regarding these worms popping up in our lawns. Um, and the best advice I can give to you at this stage is identify the worm correctly or the, the situation correctly. Like if you see some brown areas in your lawn try and lift your lawn up at that area see if it lifts up easily then maybe you've got something like grub worms or um, army worms i don't know identify the worm correctly post your questions on lawn care nut south africa there's some lacquer clever people there knowing the industry and the lawn so lacquer and whatnot and they'll give you advice um, and then get the chemical the correct chemical to treat your issue um, but like i said i'm not going to put down anything like um, cypermethrin or any of that type of things harming my earthworms and the environment if I don't really need it. Um, so I've only had to really deal with fungus and only really on my Kentucky bluegrass lawn. So nothing really on this lawn. However, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to give my lawn a lacquer kick um, with some of these special products right here. Some of them nitrogen related, some of them um, humic acids and whatnot. There's a little bit of herbicide and also fungicide for that back lawn, just as a preventative. The herbicide obviously is not a preventative, that's for the actual weeds that's there. And also our growth regulator, which has really, really held things together for me uh, through the summer. I want to I wanna give you a little tappy. Well done, boy. Well done. Very expensive product, but I tell you, more than worth the money. Hello, yes, yeah, I'm here at the back and I'm just going to half fill my sprayer here with some water before we get going. Oh, cook. Okay, so you really want to half fill your sprayer before you add the chemicals and you might ask for what reason. Um, so if you add the clean chemicals to that and by some chance you pump this thing, it will all get like concentrated into this line. So your first initial spray will be concentrated product, a no-go. 
Okay, yeah, okay, so I've got a, a ton of different products here. Yeah, I've got NC32, which is nitrogen. Yeah, I've got that lacquer, like what, what, uh, mixture that I always spray onto my lawn. Also has a wetting agent in, so it helps the rest of the stuff to stick to the leaf blade. Um, this bumper, which is a fungicide, and this herbicide, um, I'm going to put to the side. So what I do is I fill this sprayer almost right to the top because I know that 14 or 15 liters out of this 16 liter sprayer uh, will be enough to treat all three areas of my lawn. Okay, so that's lacquer. And then when we talk about chemical fertilizers or chemical products, especially herbicides, insecticides and fungicides, we really want to measure them out. So I bought this Oki for I think $9.99. Uh, an absolute bargain. Um, 9 Rand 99, please. 9.99 would have been a shocker. Uh, 9 Rand 99. And with all your uh, chemical applications, you get these type of things that fit onto the cap. So, really measure out. This is very small. So, if you were going to add like 100 ml or whatever, this probably won't do the trick so lacquer. Uh, but I'm going to start off with this lacquer. Oh, it's not closed. Yes. Yet, uh, and I've even got gloves on today. So this one I just eyeball like that, not too much of it. And then um, a little bit of this NC32. However, I'm not too worried about this one. This one you also actually want to measure out because it's got quite a lot of nitrogen in it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that. Um, my primary nitrogen fertilizer is in any case granular, so I don't really add too much nitrogen to my lawn through foliar applications. And then this one you can add 10 to 72 mils of Primomax plant growth regulator. I tell you, this is the bomb. Uh, 10 to 72 per 100 square meters times 5, so I need about 50 mil. I go very low rate. Very low rate um, because I apply it fairly frequently. Um, that's like uh, in it to win it. And then also a little bit of. Aster, iron, um, so this is, I don't overdo this as well, you don't want to do, overdo iron, um, so I think two scoops will do the trick there, this is actually 6 mil per 100, sorry all these math, that, okay no that's fine, I added 20 and I can go over 30, so that's fine, that's lacquer, let me mix this out here a bit, Okay, so that's like a mixed in now, so that's uh, good to go. Um, and then when we're done with this two Kikuyu areas, uh, then I would want to add my fungicide and my herbicide. So I'm going to spray these two areas first. I'm going to fill this up to about 14, 15 liters, somewhere in that area. Then I know I've got enough water. And then when we're done with this two areas, I'm then going to go to the back and spray this with this added in. Lekka! Yeah, okay, so it's all mixed in, ready to be sprayed. Um, yeah, I don't think there's much more. I'm going to start with the trim pass on all the lawns first. And then uh, we're going to go for the, the center part, the, the field. Yeah, I suppose I can take my gloves off now. Try not to get the chemical in my mouth. That's probably the whole purpose of the gloves. Yeah, yeah okay. Okay, y'all, so while we add it, just want to show you I deliberately spray this area, um, misspray this area, um, because I don't want to add growth regulator to a struggling area. You really shouldn't, if your lawn has got an issue like fungus or those type of things, do not add plant growth regulator, okay? So I miss that area because I don't want to slow the growth down. I really add quite a lot of chemical fertilizers to this specific area, not to the entire lawn. Um, try and get that to fill in. As lacquer as possible. I really should have just go went and bought sod to uh, get that to recover a little bit quicker. But uh, we'll struggle until we see the light in the end of the tunnel. Broken sprayer alert. Good old cable tie. 
Gott, Mann. Okay, yeah, so I'm using my hardened stripes here to direct me in the direction that I need to spray, to show me the direction in which I need to spray. That's better English. Um, so what I do is I stay on this side so I don't have to walk through the chemical all day long. And I do this, well, I actually need another hand to pump now. But for the explanation of this video, just have a look there. Like, oh, I'm losing pressure. I am losing pressure. Under pressure, washing down on me. Under pressure. Yeah, like a... Yeah, so I'm not going to lie to you, I did this entire procedure um, last week, just before the rain started. We had a okay morning and I thought, yes, let me get this plant growth regulator down before the rain nails me. Um, and then, in which then I might have the case where I can't mow. So uh, I applied the product and then 15 minutes later, it started raining. So then all those chemicals washed down. I'm not so worried about the fertilizers, but really my foliar, foliar stuff here didn't take its full effect, like the growth regulator. Yeah, so I don't want to walk too much on this lawn now, but I'm actually done here. Um, because I use the lines of my mowing, to guide me where I'm spraying. I can really spray uh, kind of ac uh, accurate. So I think I'm done with this lawn. I'm not gonna double spray it. Um, hardly ever do. I do sometimes, but I hardly ever do um, double spray in different directions. Um, so I'm gonna move on to the other areas right now. Okay, so I just want to show you, it's been only really 10 or 15 minutes, and as you can see, it's basically dried up everything right there. Also, my word, you can actually see how well this lawn has recovered. It is so thick, guys. This lawn is really, really beautiful. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add those um, fungicide and herbicides and go and spray on the back lawn. Um, but before we go there, I just want to talk about the next month, March and April. Um, lawn care wise what we can expect and I think this is a super super time up until May is a great time um, for Johannesburg or Highfeld lawns really especially your warm season stuff like Kukuyu um, guys great 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 time of the year to have your lawn in pristine condition it should have by now filled into most areas unlike my areas that's not filled in um, so yeah guys um, I've had the most success in the April months really um, over the past few years. Um, I think these lawns just flip and peak at this time. Um, so you've got to remember that through December and January we had a lot of rain. Obviously with that comes a lot of growth. You cutting it off, a lot of growth. You cutting it off, a lot of growth. You cutting it off, a lot of growth. You cutting it off. So you are cutting off quite a lot of the actual plant and the nutrients that sits within the plant. So if your lawn looks a little bit mm, tired, maybe consider giving it or adding some fertilizers if you've not been regularly fertilizing the guys who's on top of their lawns probably don't have this problem at this stage uh, but add some fertilizer to your lawn and you probably will have some color come back and your lawn looking great really it should be a tight lawn by now or tight looking and then uh, i think you're going to have a happy march and a happy april i mean temperatures will um start to decline especially our evening temperatures which will bring the growth, the speed of the growth down of our lawns, and that is just perfect. I love that time. Um, so you're not putting your lawn under so much pressure of cutting off too much of the leaf blade, and then it really just looks lacquer. It really looks lacquer. Guys, I can't tell you, I can't stress this enough, the one-third rule, so you're only allowed to cut off 
one third of your grass leaf blade and everyone watching this video probably knows this by now i wish i could tell this to the people who's not watching this video i don't know how to get to them but as i'm driving to work as i'm moving about i see guys just flipping nailing their lawns down that is not an advisable thing you can't scalp your lawn every single week guys mow tall if you're not mowing often yes see that's a struggle i see it all over and if you see someone who, who does it stop your car get out tell him um jan asseblief moet nie so kort stay nie ankel jan don't cut your lawn so short or cut it every day if you want to cut that yes see that's a struggle guys um so you yeah, spread the word the one third rule um that's probably the biggest problem in lawn care okay but happy march and april guys you'll have a lack of lawn sorry i missed the plot there for a second okay here is a whole flipping book on how to use and not use this product i'm just after the application rate onkruide op setperke en rolbane onkruide op sportvelde skoonvelde parke en grasperke that's the one so that is weeds on sports fields uh, clean fields what is skoonvelde as uh, fairways uh, parks and lawns five to seven liters per hectare or 50 to 70 mil per four liters of water and i've got about five liters of water so i need about 50 to 70 mils right here owens don't over apply rather under apply and apply again that is 50 that's about bang on 60 mils like uh, uh, the fungicide i've applied this product already twice so this is the last time i'll be applying this product this specific active ingredient um i'll rather use something else in between uh, let me just look for lawns here application rates here's the thing oak trees do you see an oak tree beacon trees beacon nuts sorry mangoes apricots do i have any of this no just give me lawns really golf courses and bowling greens that's more like it uh 10 mil per hundred squares at 7 to 14 day spray intervals it's a preventative guys that's not treating the active growing fungus i've got 200 mils 200 square meters there sorry so i need about 20 mils Ooh, that's about 30. okay oh, i'm not gonna lie my left arm the one that's pumping this thing is already like getting cramps it feels like i'm running a marathon with my arms Now, like I so I think that wraps up the spraying. Um, one or two notes: don't irrigate, obviously, your lawn for the next five to ten hours. Um, just allow it to get soaked up completely by the leaf blade and also keep your dogs and yourself off the lawn um, as much as possible until it's dried out once it's dried out it's really in a, inactive um, so it's then fairly safe to walk on so an hour or two or three or four or as long as you feel is safe um, until it's dried out completely obviously in the shaded areas it takes a little bit longer um, but until it's dried out keep off the lawn keep your dogs off the lawn and hopefully you don't harm the environment and kill your uh, friends like your bees and, and whatnot. I just say that to keep my hands safe. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching guys. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. Um, if you like this video, be sure to like it. This really helps um, to rank these videos up in YouTube so more people get to watch it and more people get to laugh at me. Um, yeah, and if uh, by any chance you've not subscribed to the channel yet, maybe consider doing that. If you feel that this video hasn't earned your subscription, subscription, no worries. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.